fixed his eyes on Clara, and soon one writer reported that all Paris is now busy with a kind of animal called rhinoceros. Fashionable ladies took to wearing their hair a la rhinoceros, piled up with a fake horn in front. Thanks to Clara's fame, her image was captured on everything, from portraits to fine porcelain, and she was even modelled as the base for a clock. Clara arrived in Venice, the magical city on the water, on a massive barge, and her appearance caused a fever of excitement among all Venetians. As he had hoped, Clara had made Vandermeer very rich, and they lived their unique life on tour together for 17 long years. At last, they reached London, and it was in London that, sadly, Clara died on April the 14th, 1758. Now Vandermeer could return to Holland and enjoy the money that they had made, and that was the last anyone ever heard of him. But hundreds of years after her death, Clara's story lives on. That extraordinary curiosity, that gentle and magnificent animal who brought excitement, sensation and rhinomania to Europe. And thanks to zoos like Chester and their conservation programme, rhinos are now protected and their numbers are increasing. But it's not just the people here that are raising funds, the rhinos are having an input too. Rosie, what are you doing? It's not me, it's the rhinos themselves. They're actually painting using their top lip. Right, let me have so a go. I've got a small pot of paint on there, if you just hold the board up, the paint will come off. He'll rub his nose on there. Yeah. Brilliant. And the paint's safe and he's happy? Completely happy, yeah. We can walk away whenever he wants. Lovely. Uh, we have a masterpiece here to add to the collection for the Save the Rhino Fund and keep Rhino Mania alive. <laughs> Yeah, rhino mania, Liz. I can't believe that something that big can run 50 kilometres an hour. They are hefty, <laughs> they really are indeed. <laughs> well, if you'd like to read more about Clara, well, there's a book out called Clara's Grand Tour, and it's by Glynis Ridley, which follows her adventures. It costs 14 99 but you could try and borrow it from your local library. And if you're stuck for ideas of what to read, you could also try this one. It's a cracker. It's Silverfin by Charlie Higson. And it's all about James Bond, a very young James Bond. And it's also the subject of our next book club. Well mm. worth the read. Now, uh, in a moment, Mabel and Lucy will be tucking into their cake. But first, take a look at what you can tuck into this week. I visit Venice and try my mouth at glass blowing. We spend a day with Baby Dexter. Simon trains with his favourite footy team. And on Friday, Zoe goes to the extreme trying out street luge. <laughs> and you had a bit of a painful moment on that, didn't you? Oh, I did, actually, yeah. but it's all better now. Good. We will see now. it on Friday. <laughs> OK, now the moment that Mabel and Lucy have been looking forward to. <laughs> it's time for there. their cake. We oh, haven't really got it yet. Did I say start? <laughs> Come on, I know it's your birthday, but really, <laughs> really. We, we were going to slice it, but um, I think they're already wet. I'll tell you what, it. you crack on my cards and I'll well, slice it. Well, thank you it. to everyone <laughs> who sent in birthday messages <laughs> and cards, like this one from Laurie <laughs> Patterson from Porth Call, who sent in this painting of Lizzie, Meg and Mabel doing a bit of karaoke. So thank you for that one. I've also got this one from Lucinda Marsh in Terrible. Dorchester. It's a bit of a 3D effect going on with the ears. And on the inside, it's got a bone. Look, Mabel, what do you think of that? It's a bone for you in there. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Lovely. I've got a 3D pop-up card here, and this one's been sent in by Saz from Doncaster, who says, Dear Mabel and Lucy, happy birthday from the Blue Peter crew of Doncaster. And uh, it's a very colourful pink and purple dog. I've never seen a pink and purple dog before. And then another one from Katie Walsh, who also says, Happy birthday. And she's written a little poem inside, and she's from Stockport. It says, uh, Happy birthday to Mabel. I know if you could say thank you, you would if you were able. And it goes on like that. Great stuff. <laughs> um, extraordinary scenes with the cake, but it's time for some presents. So, Connie, you unwrap Lucy's. I will do. Um, Zoe, unwrap Mabel's. I've got a... Right, Mabel. What's that? What's that? I Ooh. wonder. I Ooh. wonder. What the dog's like. Look, Mabel. Let's Mabel, see what's attention. in here. Woo! Come on, darling. Ball. Oh, look at that. Oh, Isn't that good? It's Lovely. yet another ball. Can you it's make fantastic. sure this time, Mabel, you don't touch it? And uh, Lucy has got a squeaky toy. Lucy, would you like, actually like She's to have a look? She's too busy eating. Oh, how <laughs> naughty. 
Oh. Go on, go on, Lucy. Just have a Shall I read you some more of this poem? Oh, please do. <laughs> it's very good. I do hope you have a birthday that's good, the only good day, just like it should. Mabel loves sea biscuits and toast. They're the things she <laughs> likes the most. Well, it's a scene of absolute <laughs> chaos here, but thanks for all your cards. Presents Happy birthday to you two, and uh, we'll see you very soon. That's it for today. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. This is Theodore and Oscar from Surrey who have been busy in their garden collecting leaves and turning them into compost. Great idea boys, your green badges are on their way. Blue Peter will be back on Wednesday, CBBC One at five o'clock. Now, if you're a big fan of Simon, you really do need to watch because the show is all about him and his Norfolk roots. And I don't mean his hair, I actually mean the place. Kuching is back with a brand new series. Wicked. Wick, wick. With more scheming. I've just had a brilliant idea. Whatever. More dreaming. We need that killer idea, guys. <laughs> yeah, right. More genius. That'll be me, then. <laughs> more comedy. <laughs> and more. Kuching. A new series. Weekdays at 5 on the CBBC channel. The moment has arrived to resolve, connect it, collect it. That's right. Earlier on, we asked you to make the connection between today's Scooby-Doo and Grange Hill. We gave you the options, and we've got a caller on the line right now who thinks they know the answer. It's Charlotte. Hi, Charlotte. Hiya. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Good. Charlotte, we were commenting on your surname. It's Hutsby Etches, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's so showbiz. It puts Hayden Smith in the shade. <laughs> anyway, how was your day? Was it good? Fine, thank you. Have you got a moan about the weather? Yeah, because when you're in bed in the morning and you toes are lovely and warm, yeah. when you get back out of bed, they get freezing cold again. Tell us about it. I, I hate, hate that. freezing toes. I don't like getting up if the heating's not on. Oh, in this studio, <laughs> it's usually freezing. So can you turn the aircon off as well? Yeah. It's all right, anyway. <laughs> Listen, Charlotte, we're going to give you the options once again, OK? So we've okay. got Max and Shaggy's towel are both yellow, Daphne and Togger are both wearing green hats, or C, Alex and Scooby are both wearing tutus. What do you think it is? I think it, the answer's A. Shall we have a look? Let's have a look. Hey! Well done! <laughs> See, look at this. Have a look at what you've got, Charlotte. You've got some Scooby Yay. prizes. Oh, is that you, Charlotte? Going, hey! Cool. Yeah. You've got a picture of Taylor. Um, you've also got a DVD player and Scooby stuff. Woo. And this little irritating thing that your mum will love. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I didn't really know what it's for, but it's got Scooby your on. You yeah, go scan, darling. Thank you. No Enjoy problem. Enjoy the rest of your week. More collected, collected next Thank week you. at the same time. Oh, That's all right. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> uh, hopefully, we can have some more Monday mornings a little bit later on. Right now, this afternoon, though, it's Monday, the 21st of February, 2005. And right now, it's a very special news round extra. We're off to Africa with Ellie. <laughs> We've been looking at pictures like this for years and charities have been trying to make things in Africa better for years. Now, many people are hoping that in 2005, poverty in Africa can be tackled once and for all. There are a lot of good things about Africa. It's a beautiful continent full of amazing people, but there's no denying it's a place with massive problems, almost all of them caused by poverty. But does it always have to be like this? Just imagine if you could end those problems for good. It sounds like an impossible dream, but could it become reality? Well, that's what I'm trying to find out, and I'm starting at the very top with Prime Minister Tony Blair. Africa is the only continent in the world that in the last 30 years has gone backwards. Every other continent, even if there are poor people in the countries, even if the countries are poor, they've gone forward. Africa's gone backwards. You see, Africa's not just got one problem. Africa's got a lot of problems. It's got these diseases like AIDS and malaria. It's got wars that go on in Africa that kill lots of people and prevent countries getting better. And it's got big problems because African countries often aren't given the right to go and sell their goods in the wealthier countries in the way that they should be able to. So we need to deal with all these issues to do and obviously they need our help as well in financial terms, in money terms. 
So what we need to do is to put all this together in a plan and get it agreed between the African countries and the wealthier countries of the world and then get it done. It sounds great. Tony Blair saying the sort of thing that aid agencies and charities have been talking about for ages. But if Africa's problems are to be solved in 2005, experts reckon it'll take the cooperation of the world's richest countries agreeing to do three big things. And to find out what they are, I've come here to Ghana. The first thing to sort out is trade, giving Africans the chance to make a living themselves so one day they won't have to rely on help from overseas. I'm visiting a rice growing project called Mapranet in the North Ghanaian town of Bolgatanga. It's funded by Comic Relief and helps these farmers by teaching them new ways to increase their crops and by lending them money so they can prepare for the future. Loads of people eat rice here in Ghana and it's really easy to grow it. So you wouldn't think it would be too difficult for rice farmers to make a living. But it is. 13-year-old Abani is having to miss school to be here. But without the money she can get from working, she won't eat today. I get up in the morning, wash the bowls in my house and walk to school. It's a long way. And when I come back from school, I come here and start weeding the rice. It's really difficult. Sometimes I get leeches in my legs and have to pull them out. Oh dear. Sometimes I don't get to eat before I go to school, but even then I still have to come here and work again. Most of the rice eaten here in Ghana is brought in from abroad. It's cheaper than local rice, it's advertised better, which means local farmers are losing out. All over Bolgatanga, we found shops selling not local rice, but American rice. If farmers from America and many other rich countries can't sell all the produce that they've grown at home, they get money from their government to help them out. That means they can afford to send produce over to Africa and sell it at very low prices, far cheaper than the local farmers. Many poor countries like Ghana say they'd like to help out their farmers in the same way. But international trade rules set by rich countries mean they're not allowed to. Campaigners say it's those trade rules that need to change if African people are to get a fairer deal. But it doesn't end there. There's another thing to sort out, and that's aid. Imagine this sack of rice represents what the UK earns every year. In 10 years' time, the government has promised to start giving Africa this much each year. At the moment, we're giving them this much. If Africa's problems are really going to be tackled, experts say it needs a lot more starting now. In fact, it needs about $50 billion a year. Sounds a lot. But experts say Western governments can easily afford it. Aid also needs to be better directed, so it reaches people who really need it. Like 11-year-old Niabai, one of the 10 million street children living across Africa. We came across him at Bolgatanga bus station, where he tries to make a living loading and unloading luggage. Kids like Niabai are so poor they live on the streets, missing out on school because they've got to spend all the time they have trying to make a bit of money. And it's not just during the day that you can find kids here. The families of many street kids live in villages that are miles away from the bigger towns, so it's almost impossible for the children to get home at night. It's 11.30 at night. We're here at Bolgatanga bus station and we've just found a load of street kids asleep on this bus behind me. They've spent all day working here loading luggage onto buses, but they don't have homes to go to, so they've had to sleep here. And in just a few hours' time, their day starts all over again. More and more children in Ghana are becoming street kids. Just as sorting out trade would help local farmers and businesses, increasing and improving aid would make a big difference to kids' lives. But even with all that help, there's another huge thing that campaigners say needs to be tackled. It's debt, and Africa's is massive. You probably know about Western governments giving a lot of money to help Africa, but did you know that at the same time some of the poorest countries in the world are having to give money back to the West? 30 years ago, many of Africa's poorest countries borrowed massive amounts of money from the world's richest countries so they could build important things like schools, roads and ports. 
Today they are still in debt and still paying back the money they owe and it's costing them billions every year. Last year, Ghana spent as much on its debt repayments as it did on education. In many ways, 14-year-old Anna Biller is lucky. He sometimes works on the streets, but a lot of the time he can go to school because he gets help from Comic Relief. Money you've raised helps pay for his uniform, school books and fees. But campaigners believe that thousands of kids like Anna Biller wouldn't need our help if the West stopped asking African countries to pay them back and instead let them spend money on helping themselves out. In some recent cases, it's already happening. One African country, Tanzania, was allowed to pay back less, so over a million extra children got to go to school last year. And in Uganda, more than two million people got clean water for the first time because some of its debts were cancelled. I'm happy with school because I know it's where my future lies. I know that if I'm able to complete school, I will get a certificate and job, and then will be different from my parents. I can help them, my brothers and sisters. I am really grateful for anything that helps us, and I pray people will continue helping, because it helps some of us realise our dreams. My dream is to one day become an engineer. So there it is, more and better aid, sort out trade and drop the debt, three clear proposals. And there are four reasons why campaigners say they could make a real difference in 2005. The big thing which could change everything is a meeting which will take place in July here at Scotland's Glen Eagles Hotel, which is famous for golf. The meeting will be made up of leaders from the world's eight most powerful countries. Because the UK is hosting it, we get to decide what they'll all be talking about. And Tony Blair has already agreed that one of the main topics will be poverty in Africa. So that's the first reason why 2005 might be the year that things start going right. And it just so happens that July also sees the UK taking over presidency of the European Union. That means that for six months we choose what issues all the European countries will have to concentrate on. And once again the UK saying that that's going to be Africa. Reason three, well that's something called the International Commission for Africa. This is a group of experts from Africa and around the world who've got together to see if there are any new ways of solving Africa's problems. They've been on the case for over a year now and very soon will be revealing what they think the answers are. Some people think the report will be just words and won't do anything. Others are hoping it'll be one more thing that makes a difference. And the fourth reason is all to do with... timing. <laughs> In 2005 is the 20th anniversary of Bob Geldof's Band Aid and Live Aid concerts which raised millions for the people of Africa. There are people dying now, so give me the money. Last year, Band Aid 20 was Britain's biggest selling single, showing that once again people want to do their bit for the world's poorest continent. And Band Aid 20 isn't the only supergroup. This year, more than a hundred of the world's charities have joined forces and formed Make Poverty History, an organisation whose sole aim is to put pressure on world leaders ahead of the big meeting at Glen Eagles. Finally, it's 20 years since Comic Relief was born, with Big Hair and Beyond on March the 11th being the 10th Red Nose Day so far. With all these things falling into place this year, you'll probably be hearing a lot more about sorting out Africa's problems. There's never been a better opportunity to improve lives there. At the moment, it's all a possibility. We'll have to wait for that big meeting in July to see if world leaders take that opportunity and really make a difference. Hey A 
new team of young adventurers faces a serious challenge. Their destination, the Arctic. Their mission, vital research into global warming. It's going to just push us to our limits. Minus 50 degrees. So incredibly cold. 5,000 miles from home. You get pushed to a limit and can't cope anymore. It's really, really tough. Serious Arctic starts Tuesday at 5 on CBBC One. It's time to go again. Yeah, we've had a fantastic day, chaps. I'm going to do one quick email about Monday mornings. It's from Lucy Hillier. Oh. Hello, in Ogham. My Monday morning is that I fell over in the slush on the way home from school and I got a wet bum. Got oh, it. Oh, bless your bum. Do you know what? We're back tomorrow at 3.40. We've got Money the Vampire, we've got BB3B, Planet Cook and Tracy Beaker. We've also got Sergeant Ben from Serious Arctic. Dismissed. See ya. <laughs> Fantastic, that's great. Keep it going. Wonderful. Okay, Jody. Yeah, thanks, Jack. Got it. Comic relief. Get this year's new red nose and the T-shirt. It's time to set sail. And this is a ship of cutthroats. Oh! You don't understand. They kidnapped me, and they'll sell me into slavery if they don't kill me first. You can help me, son. I can help you. Robert Louis Stevenson's Kidnapped, Sunday at 5.45 on BBC One. Chrissy, Zoe and Sam have to face the reality of their actions. Can they keep it together? EastEnders, tonight here on BBC One at 8 o'clock. My next girlfriend's a lot more like you. See you later. We won't be staying long. Scott has something he wants to say. I've um, made up my mind and I'm going home with Mum. But only on the condition that I stay here to the end of the year and do my exams. You're all right, Cindy. <laughs> You're going to answer that phone, OK? He's using Cindy as a shield. I know, but the soggies are going to be right up outside. <laughs> Maybe you should let these hostages go, hey? Maybe I should come over there and shut you up. Look, you want to keep control, don't you? You can't do that, keeping your eye on so many people. Well, maybe I just need to keep you out of the picture. Just keep me. Let, let them go, all right? I don't want to see anybody else getting hurt, and I don't reckon you do either. I'm the one you should keep. I told you to stay down! No, I'm the one who made you angry, all right? So just keep me and let everybody else go. No, no, you and Cindy are my best friends, all right? I want you to get out of here. Shut up! Time. Come back in about half an hour. Scotty! General! Oh, somebody shut that thing up! Be easy if the kid was out of here. All right. All right, everybody, on your feet! If you're gonna keep anyone, keep me. Don't shut up. Both of you. Cindy. You choose. What? Come on. I don't need two tough guys. 
They both want to stay so bad? You choose. Who's it going to be, eh? You do it, or you all stay. Come on, choose one! All right, everybody out. Come on! Nicely and easily. You heard me, get the hell out. I'm not leaving him. Toad! You go, or she'll stay as well. Just go, man, it'll be alright. Go, go. Get on the floor, get down! You're not gonna try anything now, are you? Wasn't planning on it. Good. All right, everyone, you're free to go. So, how'd you go? Oh, the car, Chet. Hey, you don't know that. Yeah, you might surprise yourself. Yeah, well, I could not. You know, if there's something I do well, it's failed. Copy. Don't forget those of you who volunteered to help set up the school formal. Please stay behind. And remember, everyone, many hands make light work. How'd you go? You're not seriously thinking of helping out with the lame formal. Well, not that it's any of your business. You're really sinking to the depths, aren't you? Look, I know you're too cool to actually participate in anything, but this is my last year and I want to make the most of it, if that's okay by you. Yeah, I'm going to help out with the formal. And why would you care if it's all right by me? I mean, why don't you just chuck me out like you chuck my book out? <laughs> Get over it. I, I barely know you anymore, boy. So I trashed your book, so what? I put a lot of effort in it. Well, what does that change, huh? You're going back to WA soon, I'll be out of school. We won't have to worry about it anymore, will we? Come on, let's go. It's going to be fine, right? You can use train for this kind of stuff. Michelle, Craig, Channel 44 News. Excuse me, how do you feel knowing that one of your friends no, is trapped not now. Hey, you're the one from Making Mansions. All right, no interviews, all right? Hey, no, 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 just, Nick off. Just a Nick, Nick off! Parasites? Just doing their job. Yeah, well, their job sucks. Look, he's gonna get out. He's a trained police officer and he's equipped to handle these kind of situations. This is real life, Tony. This isn't some drill. I guess we're just gonna have to trust him. Yeah, like he should have been able to trust me. Hey, come on. He wouldn't still be in there if it wasn't for me. You had no choice. Man, I could murder a bee. You're not wrong. So what's all this about then, eh? I mean, no offence, but... You just don't seem like the type. Well, I'm not. It's just, you know, life gets out of hand sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, tell me about that. I mean, what's a bloke supposed to do, eh? The bank's constantly on my back, sucking me dry. Yeah. yeah it's like they're stealing from you in the first place. God, I hate them. As much as I hate cops. I cannot relate to that. Look, why don't you give it up, eh? I mean, no one's been hurt. The courts are bound to take your story into account, especially if you end it now. Nah, nah. We stay. The cops will get me that car, then I'm out of here. <coughs> if you're thinking of turning up now, Mullet, don't bother. No, mate, no way. But listen. The place is surrounded, mate. No, mate. They're talking about you on the radio. They're on here, mate. What? What station? Listen, you're on the news! And we're coming up on ten past the hour as we take another look at developments in the dramatic bank siege unfolding as we speak. Latest news from reporters on the scene who tell us that the one hostage remaining in the bank is a young probationary police constable, though his name has not as yet been released. And there's some news just to hand about a five-car pile-up on the Benston Bridge. You're a pig. on details, but the news to hand is... Oh, I can't believe it!
believe it! Mate, just calm down, all right? I just wanted to make sure no one got... No, no, I should do myself a favour. Do the whole world a favour. Just finish you off right now. Fair enough. What do you think you're doing? Sit down! I'm leaving. Who do you think's in charge here, mate? No. No, this is going to end now. This time, it's your choice. Either you shoot me here and now, or we walk out of this together. I swear I'll shoot you! No. No, you won't. You're not a killer. I'm oh, serious! Well, so am I. Either you make good on your promise and have the police swarm in here before I hit the floor, or you and I walk out and end this now. Your choice. It's just so typical of him. Like, lately it is. He's changed so much. Do you want to try some of the Pritikin slice? Apparently it's food from the You know 70s. what really gets me is that he knows exactly how to annoy me. <sighs> well, then ignore him. Get over it. Yeah. Don't worry, I will. And he'll just have to get used to it. I'm not going back to WA. Good. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm gonna stay here. I'm gonna get on with my life and I'm gonna be happy. It's the best revenge, right? Yes. Hey, maybe we should head back to the hall and help Boyd set up for his special night. You mean rub it in his face that you're only staying in town to make his life hell? No. And as if that'll bother him. He'll probably get crowned homecoming king or something and have to dance to a slow love song with Aaron and then accept an award for being the school's biggest Ken doll. Yeah, I think they're saving that award for Brendan Bond. Well, if Brendan Bond does get it, Boyd will probably be outside waiting for him to bash him up or something. Why are you making Boyd the bad guy in all this? I'm sorry, where did that come from? I just think you should give him a break. And what's it to you? But what, do you alphas all have to stick together or something? <laughs> Look, Scar, whatever. OK, you can't guilt me into taking your side. Boyd's my friend too, and if he needs my support, I'm going to give it to him. Stay sharp! There's movement at the door! The hostage is coming out. Do not fire your weapons. <laughs> the gunman is leaving the building. He is unarmed. Do not fire. I repeat, do not fire. Show me here, show me here. It's gonna be okay, mate. You're on the meds. Down on the ground. Face first. Oh, thank God. That's okay. I was so worried. I shouldn't have safe. left you in there. No, no, it's all right. You made the right decision. Anything you say can do. Maybe taken down as evidence. And you get a court of law. Superhero Such coming a in! Big ride. And we saw cows and lambs. Did you? Did we? Yeah. Hey, did you see any horses? Yeah. Uh, hey, guess what? I'm a bit worried about my heart. Can you listen to my heart for me? Can you? Can you be the doctor? Can you? Hold on to those. First of all, you'd have to find Granddad's heart, wouldn't you? I do have one, <laughs> contrary to popular opinion. Can you hear it? Yeah. Boom boom. Boom, boom. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks for bringing me in to see me. Oh, look, it's no problem. Isabel uh -huh. said you were working late. It was on our way. It's oh, fine. Such a lovely surprise. Yeah. One of many from you lately. Ooh. And you get. Thank you. Yeah, you've been such a good friend to me. Oh, I appreciate it. It's all right. <laughs> it's really helped me to clarify things, you know. Oh, what are ex-wives for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've decided to try and uh, rekindle my relationship with Izzy. Oh, yeah, good oh. Hey, would you like one of these? Oh, you you're yourself. lucky. I'm going to take her for a weekend away at the Arrow Valley. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to think uh, where that place was just outside of Lilydale. Where we stayed? Oh, the, the, well, there was a, a bedroom with a fireplace in it, you know? I forget. Yeah, oh, goodness, what was it called? It was uh, Saint something, Saint... Uh... Carl? Look, I don't mind lending a hand when things get tough, but do you think asking me to facilitate your love life is pushing things just a little bit? Sorry, I didn't think. No, obviously you didn't think. Give this death this guy back to Ben. Maybe he can find your brain. Hello? Oh, hi, Tony. No, no, hang on. What is it? What's wrong? Well, let's hear it for Aaron's Bar's very own local hero, Constable Stuart Parker. Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Thank Hooray! Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, just enjoy the drink. Didn't realise you were bringing a cheer squad, mate. Yeah, well, you deserve it, mate. Kept a cool head today, unlike me. Just follow my instincts. Yeah. Hey, 
Hey, Tony, you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Thanks to this guy, you should be making a fuss over him, not oh, me. Oh, must have been terrifying. Oh, nothing I'm not trained for. Yeah. Well, I'll just get a beer. Yeah, yeah of course. Hey, cuz, are you all right, man? I heard about the dude out at the bank. Yeah, how's the ticker bearing up? Don't want you flaking out tomorrow in the middle of my court case. As touched as I am by your concern, Janelle, my ticket's just fine. I'm feeling OK. Sorry? What was that? I'm feeling really traumatised. What? Do you know how much compo you could be in for? Play up the trauma angle and you could be singing along with a stack of Johnny Cash. Oh, God rest his soul. Do you know, when we're in court tomorrow, can you just remind me to tell you to uh, not say anything? Hey, Mark, let's go around with Stu. Hey. Hey. Bit of a close call today, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was. No, it didn't really help much. You acted in the heat of the moment. Uh, you know, I don't blame you for having feelings for him. What? Stu. He's smart, intelligent, brave, and his self-respecting girl would just love him. Whatever emotions you saw from me today, it, they mean nothing, OK? It was just, it was a reaction to a heightened situation, that's all. What? Right. to study. Not too impressed with your attitude, I must say. I mean, this hearing could solve all our financial problems and you're sitting there with your nose in a book. It's a school book. And? And my exams are important, Mum. I just think you need to get your priorities in order, young man. Big Bricky? Mm, put it on your tab. Hope you don't mind. Oh, I'll get it. Oh, I'll take over. Try and keep it in one piece. <laughs> oh, the pressure. <laughs> oh, hello. Come in. Thanks. Hello, mister. How are you today? Mm -hmm. Good. More to the point, how are you? Oh, I'm pretty tired. Yeah. Certainly need to rest. You haven't got any plans on today, have you? Um, I have, actually. I said I'd be there for Stingray during his mum's court case. I told her she shouldn't even think about it. Yes, after what you've been through, it's imperative you rest. Post-traumatic stress is a real possibility. See, you can't argue with the doctor. All right, OK, but I swear I just feel a little tired. Good girl. And remember, your windows squeak, so no sneaking out. No won't. <laughs> Sleep easy. I will. She's one of those type A people, never gives herself a minute's rest. Yeah. Look, I just, um... Uh, I just wanted to apologise for last night. It was totally inappropriate. Yeah, it was. But I, I appreciate the apology. Mm. I'm just trying to fit into Izzy's life at the moment. And now that parenthood isn't on the horizon... Yeah, it's... can't be easy. Yeah, still that's no excuse for dropping my relationship problems at your feet. Just make sure that you're not making all the effort. You know, she's got to fit into your life as well, otherwise you might end up just resenting her. You do realise it's perfect skating weather outside and we're stuck in here sticking up pink balloons again. <laughs> so why'd you volunteer for more? To a nice guy, mainly. You two are as bad as each other. Oh, what, so we got to do it all by ourselves, do we? <laughs> well, we can bail too. Yeah, but at least if I'm here, I'm not going to run into Sky, am I? <laughs> What's so funny? You, so much teen angst. We've got the place to ourselves. We may as well enjoy ourselves. Come on, Boydie. Dance with me. <laughs> okay, Mum, Tony's waiting. Let's go. <laughs> what do you reckon? It's great. Isn't it one of these? Oh, technically. Okay, Mum, we've really got to go, all right? Oh, don't want to be late. Keep your hair on. Do I look like a woman who is about to make some serious bucks? I thought this was about compo, Mum. Pay for the car and that. It is. With a little bit on the side to buy Mummy some treats. And what about medical bills and pain and suffering? What did Tony say? Nothing. Mummy's representing you. Yeah, maybe, but he thinks I'm some kind of cheat. Is that what he told you? No, of course not. I am not faking this injury if that's what you're thinking, and I am deeply hurt if you think I am. I'm scared that if you get caught telling porkies, you might go to jail. Hey. Do you think I need my own son doubting me? I've got the bacon and the lousy Rebecca Munkles to do that. What I need from you is some loyalty and support. I know, Mum. Sorry. When you're a Timmons, it's us against the world, matey. Are we going to stick together and support each other, yeah? Yeah. Well, come on, what are you holding me up for? <sighs> what do you think? 
I think Sky's gonna hate it. We did a good job. Yeah. I can't believe this is going to be my last school formal. Yeah, it must be weird, you know? No more school next year, being able to do whatever you like. Yeah. It must be scary, though. Not really scary. Yeah, no more Mr Franklin's got to be a good thing. <sighs> that, plus all the crap I've been getting at school about Sky lately. Or words out about the kiss. I've been copping it big time. Hey, no one said anything to me. Yeah, well, I'm the guy who turned his girlfriend gay. Pleased to meet you. That's all right. It's my own fault for being dumb enough to go out with someone like Sky anyway. Hey, you don't mean that. Uh, it was always wrong, you know. She was always trying to change me. But I guess in the end, I was the one who changed her. It was good for a while, though. I mean, oh, look who I've gone out with. His cousins, Luca. It doesn't get any worse. Stingray is the most decent guy I've ever gone out with. And that's saying something. Exactly. And, uh, I just think I'm destined to attract freaks and losers. Well, that's nothing to do with who you are. I mean, you're a great girl. The right guy just hasn't come along yet. Yeah, I'll keep my eye out for white horses. You'll find somebody who likes you for you. I promise. Five thousand bucks? <laughs> Cos you're the man! Yeah, well, it's just a pretty standard settlement, really. It's no biggie. <laughs> yeah, hardly a retirement package. Which is obviously what you're after. No, just a bit of justice. You should have asked for more. Janelle, I think you should count your lucky stars you got anything at all. Meaning? I mean, it could have gone either way, so don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Hey, Mum, what's first on your shopping list? Well, I thought first up, a brand new skateboard for my favourite son. Oh, cool! <laughs> and then I reckon a knot in the pokies for my favourite self. Excuse me. Hey, how's it going? G'day. Good. Oh, how'd you go today? Oh, well, technically, as a win. That's why you look so thrilled. Well, I've just become a scumbag lawyer helping bogus clients. How thrilled can I be? Anyway, enough about me. How was your day? Full on being worshipped? Oh, yeah, a bit like that. Just a few interviews with Juno. It's got a phone call from the commissioner. Did it? Yeah, she reckons I might get a medal. Well, so you should. Yeah, but that's not the best bit. Travis Dean's dropped the charges against me. Guess you already knew about that, though. Yeah, well, took a bit of persuading. Yeah, some scumbag lawyer. Thank you. It's the least I could do. After all the stuff with Cindy, um... I think I might have taken a bit out on you. Oh, I mean, that's cool, breaking up. It's never easy, you know? 